So there's the digital multimeter I was trying to use for this project. I should have known a couple years ago when I tried to fix my dehumidifier. Um, it was giving me trouble. So I couldn't rely on it. I tried to play around with it to see if something was up that I could fix. And uh, rather than waste my time fixing a modern day piece of equipment, I figured I'd go out and buy a new one and uh, fix a 65 year old 10 cent radio. So like an idiot, I went and bought another Craftsman. Um, this multimeter was rated in the top 10 for 2016, albeit on the very low end based on its price. But uh, it's not like I'm going to make a living out of doing repairs at, yet, at this time. So if I decide to upgrade to a Fluke or something, I could do that. So if you recognize this, what I spent today doing with my new multimeter, well I shouldn't say today, the last half hour, is I downloaded uh, Vintage Electronics Component Coding because I haven't looked at anything like this since, you know, first year of college, 35 years ago. So I was able to uh, identify the resistors and they also have capacitors on here, the mica capacitors that this unit also has. So there's some good information. It's all on one eight and a half eleven piece of paper. Well, that was handy. So I went through and located every capacitor, you know, such as that one back in there. Um, and then I, using the chart, uh, verified all 10 resistors from the parts list. And they all were close to within the range. I was able to check them right connected uh, within the circuit. And um, in fact, I couldn't find one, and it was way back in there. I don't know if you can see it. It's um, right under there, right on the tip of my finger. I'm wiggling it, and that was a um, almost a five meg resistor, and that was a tough one to get. But anyway, all the resistors checked out, and um, it was too coincidental that they were all exactly like they were specified to be and um, I know it's not a great idea to check uh, component values while they're connected in the circuit but um, I saw a gentleman on YouTube do it and they said it's close enough to determine if your resistors are bad and uh, certainly turned out to be a good way of doing it so I got a new multimeter shit can the old one and uh, I guess I'm gonna move on to these capacitors next which worries me a little bit so uh, tune in later. Thank you. So now I'm going to go through the capacitors. Um, I'm always a little cautious when I'm starting a new hobby and I've watched a couple people online just dig through these capacitors and and manhandle them and check them and um, you know a lot of people just cut them out and replace them with modern capacitors. You have a few people who uh, uh, remove the wax and then insert modern capacitors within the cardboard shell or the paper shell and then seal them off again with wax you have some people that remove the wax and then put the new uh, capacitors inside the tube but don't reseal them just keep the paper tube and have the uh, new capacitor free floating inside the tube um, so i don't want to just cut them out and replace them i kind of like the uh, the gimmick of kind of saving the paper um, uh, another gentleman who uh, has a lot of posts on radio repair and television repair um, checks them all and reinstalls them if they're fine. He removes the positive leg, the side opposite of the stripe, and then uses a uh, uh, an analog uh, multimeter and he watches for the deflection and watches for infinite resistance to show that they're not uh, leaking uh, across the... Uh, the, the capacitor and then he reinstalls them if they're fine um, this one here is very suspect um, it's it's where I found the bubble of wax on the bottom of the case when I was cleaning the case it almost looks like the wax core is pushing out on this end and you can see that drip right there looks like it probably happened when it was operating hot um, the other ones look fine um, and this one worries me because it's one of those dual capacitors where you have uh, two different at least two different 
capacitance values depending on how you connect it. This one worries me because it looks pristine. Um, and, and I like the way it looks in there. So, you know, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I have to formulate a plan. I think what I really want to do, though, is cut this one out and experiment with it. Um, maybe take a measurement with my new ohm meter. I know there's probably things that meter won't tell me. Uh, but maybe I can get an indication of, of, of what the uh, capacitance is. And I, I could also just disconnect the positive end and try to see if um, I get infinite resistance across it, similar to what another gentleman tried or does uh, when he's checking his capacitor. So um, I'm going to formulate a plan, but I think I'm going to start with this one. And I might even, uh, after I remove it and find out that it's failed, I might even put it in the oven and try to get all the wax on it before I proceed with the other ones. Um, you know, it's very likely that this is the only bad component in the entire unit, and I could replace that and put it all back together. It's also very likely that there's 300 problems with the unit, including the tubes, which I haven't even addressed yet. So, I don't know. We're just going to keep plugging along. So, um, stay tuned. So, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but you can see I cut off the positive end of this leaky capacitor. And when I say leaky, I mean the wax is shooting out of it. So, and you can see my multimeter is set to the mega ohm region or setting. Now I'm going to put the leads across and you can see it's going from some value to overload and then it sits there. If I go back to measure it again, it's overload. So now if I turn the leads back around and put the voltage in the opposite direction, the same thing should happen, or did happen. See? Now it's going to go back to overload again. But, oops. It's an overload. Now I don't know, it took a little time if that's an indication of anything bad. Uh, according to one uh, gentleman on YouTube I watched, that would tend to lead me to believe it's a good capacitor, but the fact that it's leaking out wax or it shows me that if I heat it up, it's likely going to fail if it's not already partially failed. So I wanted to show that because that's how he proceeded or could proceed through the rest of these capacitors to see if they're fine. Um, but I'm going to cut this one off on top of it and then try to use my meter to read the capacitance if see if that works well I won't be measuring the capacitance of this because I uh, couldn't get the insulation off this lead it broke right off I could have gotten a multimeter across it on this one but this one's done so this one's got to be replaced at any rate so that made my uh, decision easier uh, the next thing I want to do tonight is uh throw this in the oven and see if I can melt the wax. So this is going to be my first experimental uh, capacitor. Uh, I was one for two for measuring its capacitance or checking to see if it was good. Now I'm going to try to melt it in the oven and see if I can get the wax out of it and see if I can get to the paper. So if I decide to restuff these capacitors uh, and keep the vintage look, uh, this will be my experiment with doing that. Either that or I'll burn the house down. So check this out. I had an idea. I was able to uh, carve away with a razor blade the bulging section of wax on this end and get to the lead. And um, I can measure its capacitance after all, although I'm not sure what it means. So this says... It's creeping up there. 46 nanofarads. It's still creeping up. I have to see how this meter works with capacitance readings. So let's just call it 46, 47 nanofarads for a goof. And if I go to my parts list, um, Nano is negative ninth, so 47 nano. 
that's a negative ninth. So if I want to make it negative six, something doesn't add up here. Let me think about this a second. All right, so this capacitor says 0 0.05, that's all it says. Um, I gotta assume that's microfarads. I go to my chart, I go to my parts list, and there is a 0 0.05 microfarads, uh, two of them. And 0 0.05 microfarads is 50 nanofarads. So let's go back to the narrow farad readout on here. And look at that, it's like close to 50, they don't give it tolerance here. So it's close to 50 nanofarads, so it's almost within spec, but the fact that it's leaking, um, we're going to go ahead and experiment with this one anyway. Um, we're going to call this bad, and there's not much I can do with it anyway, it looks spent, so... Um, things are adding up here. The multimeter seems to be measuring capacitance. I'm not sure it measures equivalent series resistance. I'm not sure it, uh, that under load this thing wouldn't get off tolerance. You know, I'm not really sure. Um, but we're going to go ahead and put this one in the oven and see if I can restore the paper. So I put the capacitor in some foil. We're going to plop it in the oven. Like the lowest setting possible, 175. And uh, this time I'm gonna remember to turn it on. And uh, we're gonna have capacitor sandwiches. We'll check back in a minute. So here's the capacitor. It's been in the oven. I'm not gonna lie to you. I already did this to check it. There it is. And um, I'm going to put this back in there so I can clean the rest of the wax off. But I'm not going to bother filming or uploading anymore after this. Oh, look at that. You can see the foil and the layers of paper. There's the shield. That's why it's a negative ground. Anyway, this is going in the trash. And it probably was a perfectly good resist uh, capacitor. And I'm starting to wonder if uh, all the paper capacitors aren't perfect. And maybe it's just the uh, electrolytic capacitor that looks great on the outside. and Or maybe it's just a bad tube and I'm wasting my entire day. Alright. I'm going to try to clean this out. And...